Good evening and welcome to Bedford Boys Soccer on BCTV 23. I am Andrew Hansen alongside Matt Dion. We'll be bringing you the action tonight. It's the 5-0 undefeated Bedford Bulldogs, defending state champions, playing host to the Wyndham Jaguars tonight, who also are without a loss. They're 4-0-1. And Matt, what what do you see as the keys to the game tonight between this matchup of two teams with great records so far? Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate the introduction. As usual, Bedford comes in with a strong performance in their first five matches, having conceded only one goal. So they're always looking for the next test. And I think if Bedford does well, they're going to be very direct in their attack. They've got three talented players up top, and Nathan Satiris, Zach Vero, and Vitor Rodriguez. Um, if they're building up the ball behind those three up top and, and allowing them to be creative, they'll get in behind and they'll have their scoring opportunities. Likewise, behind the ball, if they're getting the right players back in support uh, defensively, then they'll limit Wyndham's opportunities. On the other side of the ball, uh, Wyndham, they're coming in, you know, again, undefeated, as you pointed out a moment ago, with just one tie on the season against a talented Exeter team. And uh, they're still building their confidence. I think that along the same lines as Bedford, um, they're going to be looking to limit Bedford's opportunities mostly by getting the right number of players behind the ball defensively and, um, and picking their moments in the attack. And that's going to be a tall task for the Jaguars looking at Bedford's offensive po firepower, looking at the game scores so far. They've outscored their opponents 21-1 to 1 on the season, whereas Wyndham, they've yet to lose, but they've only outscored their opponents 9-4. to 4. So it seems like they're in... Uh, closer matches so far, uh, whereas Bedford's had a little bit more of an easy time so far. Yeah, Bedford is, is going to score prolifically this year. And in fact, the one goal they conceded was a penalty, which is you know speaks a lot to really their, their dynamic play on defense as a team while the ball's in play. Wyndham, they're still trying to find out who they are. They're trying to find out if they have the medal to compete with the top teams in the state. So tonight's going to be one of those matches that uh, points them in a direction. Absolutely, and we're excited to bring it to you here on BCTV. We we'll hope to bring, bring you a couple more games during the regular season. And while we have a minute here, Matt, do you want to go over the Bedford starting lineup? Sure, certainly. Um, starting in goal is going to be Aiden Wishard. Um, he's a senior keeper, captain of the team. Uh, in the back at center will be uh, Drew Middleton. And along his sides will start uh, Nathan Vero, who's Zach's younger brother, as well as... Um, uh, Avery Hudson on the other side. Bedford will play a 3-5-2 formation, meaning that they're going to have two uh, holding center midfielders. Uh, holding center midfielders tonight will be uh, James Poshman and uh, Brian Peters. Uh, at the top of that center midfield triangle will be Nathan Satiris. On the outside, um, midfield, also helping out on defense, will be uh, Jake Bowden. And then on the other side will be um, Ricardo Fultran. And then up top, of course, we talked about the talented strikers with Vitor Rodriguez and Zach Vero. On the other side of the ball, I'll quickly uh, share the uh, Wyndham starting lineup. Wyndham will be starting Preston Neal in goal. Um, center back will be John Kane, emotional leader for the team. Um, on his two sides will be Ryan Pascarella and Jackson Mahoney. Um, they also will play um, with a holding center midfielder and Cam Atkinson. Um, They'll going to put two boys up top in the middle of that center midfield at Matt Kearney and uh, Owen LaRocco. At the top, they're going to have their striker and their playmaker, Aiden Peretz. And on the outside midfielders will be Charlie Breen and Landon Neal. Thanks, Matt. Great to know the lineups. And as some of our viewers, this might be their first chance to look at the Bedford squad this year. And Bedford graduated 11 seniors off of that state championship team. So Coach Pepper has quite a challenge to try to keep the program flowing with a, a, the majority of the team having graduated. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting uh, scenario they find themselves in this year. Last year, they were just chock full of talent, real, absolute raw talent. And probably much of their season came easy to them. They did graduate a tremendous amount of talent in many positions in the field but still find themselves in a successful position. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with um, what I'm understanding to be really their increased emphasis on detail and work ethic and standards and training. Uh, the boys recognized straight away um, the loss in talent, and they've worked hard to build the chemistry to um, close that gap through 
just great teamwork, intensity, and, and um, chemistry during their training sessions. And it certainly helps to have that motivation when you've seen your classmates, your teammates prevail at that ultimate challenge, winning the state championship. It, you know, seeing that, tasting it, has got to help with the motivation to when Coach Pepper says, hey, these are the things we need to work on to get to the level that those guys were just at that gra who graduated. Yeah, and, you know, uh, success can breed success. And, um, you know, as a coach for many years myself, um, oh, we're going to pause here for the National Anthem. We'll get into that in just a minute. Stay with us for the National Anthem. Well, Matt, right before the anthem started there, you were mentioning your coaching experience. Yeah, so I've, <clears throat> I've, excuse me, I've been coaching in soccer in New Hampshire for about 25 years. And, you know, when we talk about success breeding success, coaches love to be able to paint the picture of success for the players. And you bring up a great example in having won the state championship, seen what it takes, uh, how hard it can be, especially against talented teams like Manchester Central where you're really talking about the, the class of the class in, on the field. And having watched that game myself last year, I was just so impressed with uh, their focus, their determination. And when a, a coach can, can take that snapshot and, and show their players this is what it takes, that can help you uh, be, uh, become the launching pad for your success in, in future years. Yeah, those battles against Central really are fun to watch. If you haven't seen them in recent years, Make sure you check those out this season. Looking at Bedford's schedule. Let's see if I can bring it up here. William is lining up on our left of the screen here. Of course, in front of their goalkeeper, Preston Neal. Preston's a um, junior captain goalkeeper. They found the schedule, Matt. Bedford is going to play at Manchester Central this year in the regular season on October 15th. So six or seven games here in the meantime to get ready for that. Yeah, certainly it'll be the test. And of course here in black to our right is the Bedford Bulldogs. Lining up in front of their senior captain goalkeeper, Aiden Wishard. So Wyndham plays it back to get things underway. And Bedford quickly turns it over. Notice their speed and attack. They instantly get players up into the mix. Looking to create those opportunities. Be the first goal kick of the game. Now you mentioned the offensive firepower of these Bulldogs and for our viewers at home, number 11 is Vitor Rodriguez. He helps lead that attack. He scored the first goal in the 2 nothing win over Hanover here in the third game of the season, which is a good early test for the Bulldogs. Poshman's going to be conservative. They're going to play the ball back 
to their keeper, spread the defense out again, and look for their opportunities to, to move the ball forward. Poshman is that midfielder you see, number five. Wyndham looking to set up its first shot on goal of the evening. Cross into the box, headed away by Bedford. It's good defensive clear there by the, by the back on Bedford. <coughs> Vitor nice and aggressive there. But Wyndham has the throw in. That'll be an easy one handled by Ian Wishard. It's going to settle the defense out, move him up, try to create the spaces. That was Drew Middleton who played it back to Wishard. Now, Vitor is such a talent. You mentioned the playing surface, Matt, before we started the broadcast. It's, it's a major factor, isn't it? Yeah, so this, this surface is 13 years old. It's original to the school. And uh, a 13-year-old turf surface plays plays very, very, very fast. Um, Bedford's, Bedford's game is, is built around breaking down an opponent through buildup, uh, through short passing, and then killer, you know, killer um, entry passes into the attacking third of the field. That's very difficult. You would argue that uh, the surface here at Bedford is counter to their own strategy. But Bedford will take chances. They'll take chances up top. They've got such tremendous speed. Zach Vero is a, is arguably um, you know, at least a divi at least a new Northeast world class speedster on the field. Uh, his second hobby is uh, track, and he's a tremendous tremendous speed runner. There he is, right there, playing the ball number ten. So it'll be fun to keep an eye on his speed tonight. And we've got a free kick for the Jaguars. Yeah, Zach Vero just got a bit, a bit uh, in tight on that. It's an easy call for the referee to make in that spot on the field, especially. Both teams trying to get settled here. As we have 36 minutes remaining in the first half, still scoreless. Wyndham tries an aggressive ball to the center of the box. It's not a bad idea. You want to move the goalkeeper off the line and see, you know, how much uh, courage they have to to challenge those balls at the top of the area. Um, Aiden handled that one, you know, with complete class. He showed that courage and confidence to get up there quickly and secure that. Yeah, so much of the game is about engagement when the ball is furthest away from you in the field and. You know, Aiden there obviously was, was locked into what was happening at midfield. And the moment the ball was played, like a great center fielder in baseball, they're going to be off with a, off with a gun. Opportunity for Wyndham cleared away there. Now that was um, attacking center midfielder Matt Kearney, who was really trying to play a ball in through the seams. And it could have been a really dangerous opportunity if it had found one of the gaps. Correctly looking to play the ball back at an angle to, to find a trailing a trailing midfielder. That'll be a corner kick. The ball deflected off of Jake Bowden. So we'll see how Wyndham tackles this. Do they have a set play? Bedford's going to defend really the, the gaps and the spaces. Wyndham clearly has their run set up. Great clear. Great clear by Middleton. I'm sorry. Uh, Bowden on the, the little half volley there. Yeah. Bedford yet to develop any sort of a rhythm here. The rhythm is the key. Uh, I think when a team starts to possess the ball, uh, just just to gain touches and, and build build confidence, like this ball right here, I was just about to say might have been better off going back, but here uh, Zach Vero is working his way in. It's a clean tackle. No harm there. I like that unbiased commentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
that's a foul. Yeah. Sorry, Drew. So free kick opportunity for the Jaguars. 34 minutes to play here in the scoreless first half. Bedford appears to be holding it about the top of the penalty area. They want to draw a line and uh, limit the, the space behind that line. That would have been trouble if he got his foot on that one. Handled easily by Aiden Wishard. <clears throat> it was Aiden Peretz with the shot on goal for the Jaguars. Aiden Peretz is probably Wyndham's most technical player. He's a strong, strong, experienced player. We've got a whistle on the far side. Was that offsides? Did you see that? No, I think I think we have a stoppage partly because I think the goalkeeper knocked uh, got knocked in that post. Yes, I noticed that as well. They'll stop the play here, check with the goalkeeper, ensure that he's he's okay. If there's any question about you know a knock to the head, you know they're they're really um, hyper conscious of this these days, um, more so than I think when I was growing up playing sports. Um, we would probably brag about you know seeing stars when we were kids, but these days there's nothing to laugh about. Yeah, Preston Neal must have passed the test there, the concussion test. <laughs> yeah, I don't see the blue tent anywhere, but he seems to be. Seems to be ready to play. Yeah, based on the restart um, and the uh, and the arm in the air, we're sitting uh, waiting for the referees to allow the restart. Must have been a clock uh, a clock issue. And we're off and running here. Clock is now set at 33:14 and running. A clean header by Avery Hudson in the back pushes the ball back upfield for Bedford. Zachary Vero throws it into Rodriguez, but cleared away by the Jaguars. Now with a little bit of momentum. Avery takes that one cleanly off the chest, directs it to himself, plays a nice ball forward, and Bedford now can maintain a bit of possession. And again, very direct style here, bypassing the midfield, looking to get up to Vitor, Nathan, and Zach. Smooth footwork there by Vitor. But cleared away by Wyndham. That's Fultran now, set for the throw-in. Statires is number two. So James Poshman, who's playing one of the holding center midfield positions, he's clearly got more offense on mind tonight, getting a bit more forward. He's a very creative young man. And one of the reasons for that is the absence of Flanagan in this contest. Yeah, Matt Flanagan um, suffered a foot injury. He'll be taking tonight off. He would normally play in that position, and he would normally be that attacking-minded holding center midfielder. Um, in his place, we got to see um, um, Bri Brian Peters, excuse me. Brian Peters start in his place. And Brian is a bit more conservative. He'll probably be a bit more defensive-minded, giving James Poshman that freedom to get forward and and contribute to the attack. So alternating headers leads to Bedford controlling the action, but Wyndham wins the throw in. You know, if I'm Wyndham, I'm I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. Ten minutes into the game. You know, we've seen the play extend both ends of the field. They've handled everything pretty easily in the defensive third, and they've created some opportunities with the restarts in the attacking third. 
they're not losing, um, you know, many battles in the center midfield. Uh, Bedford, you know, maybe correctly will try to bypass that midfield to be more direct. We did see that one long ball up ahead to Vitor just a minute or two ago, which when he started using that fancy footwork, that was almost Bedford's best opportunity there. But you're right, it, it doesn't seem like the 50-50 balls are really in favor of, of either team so far. Yep, I would agree with that. <clears throat> Cleared away by Middleton. He's been active so far on the defensive end for Bedford. Bedford wins possession there with a clean tackle. And here goes Zach. Let's see what he's able to create with his speed. And we've got a foul there in the corner by Vitor. You know, seeing Vero's speed up front and hearing you describe it, it reminds me of Mackenzie McEachern for the girls team, who is just so much fun to watch with her speed and the damage it can create. Yeah, you know, the trap sometimes with a player with such great talent and speed is um, to rely too much on the speed. And, um, you know, uh, years past, I've had conversations with Zach. I had the opportunity to uh, coach him a little bit um, when he was a, a youth player. And, um, you know, we often talked about just being a little less predictable and, and trying to uh, uh, find that opportunity in those big moments to do the least expected thing. Big chance here for Wyndham breaking in. Breen, Breen set that up. And then the shot on goal by Eden Peretz again. Nice save by Wishard. Yeah, that was real good build-up by Wyndham. Uh, they found a, a perfect little give-and-go through one of the seams, got in, nice ball crossed. And, uh, you know, Avery Hudson played that ball out for the corner. It was a good, safe, conservative play. Um, wouldn't disagree with that, given his back was to the field. And, you know, live, live for another moment here with the corner kick. Here comes that corner. That's a nice, nice ball. Peretz's header goes past the goal line, though, so... Bedford will have a, a goal kick. Peretz is one of those interesting players where, um, you know, while he may not be on the score sheet yet this year, um, I would bet just about anything by the end of the school year uh, or by the end of the season, uh, he'll be among their top goal scorers. Currently, their top goal scorer is LaRocco. Um, Owen has four on the season, and then Breen has three. So it won't be long, I don't think. By the way, it won't be long as a... His Beatles title of a song. <laughs> Just uh, want to throw that in. Matt is the Beatles expert for Bedford 105.1. <laughs> Tell our, our listeners when they can, and our viewers when they can catch that show. Well, Beatles Rewind airs three times a week. Um, first time is Thursdays at noon. Then we run a show Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. And then uh, Mondays at 5 p.m. during the drive time back. Thank you for that plug. Of course. Not that I didn't kick it off. <laughs> Another free kick for Wyndham. They've had at least three in Bedford's end. Yeah, this is Jackson Mahoney putting a ball right in at the top of the area. Smart play. They're calling a corner kick off the Bedford defender. Again, I would say um, uh, this is really feeling like it's, um, it's a more Wyndham game than it is a Bedford game right now. Not a shootout. Of course, we are scoreless, but it doesn't feel like it is on the verge of becoming a shootout either. They're just... Keeping everything at a, a little bit of a slower pace. That's a goal. Oh, I thought that was in. <laughs> right, as we, right as we say it, there's the best chance of the night. Bedford you know, fortunate that that header went wide. If we had replay, Andrew, I'd, I'd go back and point to the, to the type of corner kick that the player, uh, the boy played from the corner. That was Landon Neal who, who kicked the corner and John Kane on the header. Yeah, so he, he deliberately hit that ball low. Those can be the most difficult balls for defenders to clear. And uh, they had a set play on that where they were trying to get a deflection um, into another space. And uh, clearly, um, you know, it worked out for them. Just inches off the post on the, on the shot for the head. And from our angle, it looked like it was going to go in. Just curled around the, the post there. Well, here comes Virao. But that's punched away. 
So we'll have a, a throw in here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, much like the Bedford goalkeeper, Preston Neal, you know, is, is controlling his box. He's not hesitant. Clearly has the speed and the vision to come off his line and, and make the play that's needed in that moment. Now Neal is directing traffic ahead of Bedford's corner kick. We'll see how Bedford plays this one. Low driven ball. Hmm. Acrobatic attempt by Vitor. Did they call that a dangerous play? Well, actually I'm, I'm questioning what the call was myself. Um, I'm not clear where, um, where they felt it could be. It seemed like he pointed at Vitor after that attempt at a bicycle kick. Yeah. I'll point out that um, that was Ricardo Fultran there on the outside midfield. He's another talented young man with, uh, with the Bedford Bulldogs. Been able to watch him play during the summer league games this year, and he can have quite an impact on the field. Bal Bedford is really hard to find any weak spots on the field. 24 and a half minutes to play here in the first half, still scoreless. And Vitor with a nice rush. Uh, we'll give and go at the top of the box. Just couldn't quite connect on that give and go. Yeah, John Kane, their center back, he played that with absolute class. He just held his position, was close enough to play the ball, kept, him, kept himself between the goal and the player and just allowed his goalkeeper to make the play. I think as, as, as John Kane goes on this field for Wyndham, so goes Wyndham. Well, he's obviously talented if he's making those types of defensive plays, but he's all, and he's also the one who almost scored on the header. Yeah, he's another of the captains on the Wyndham Jaguars team. So much like Bedford defended earlier, Wyndham's going to set a line at the top of their penalty area. Middleton plays it into the area. Yeah, handled easily. Preston is on that easy. It's Brian Peters playing a simple ball back to Avery Hudson. Now we've got Vero in space. Plays the ball back at an angle, looking for the trailers. It's best he could have done with that, given the speed that he was going. You see how fast his turf plays. And quickly we get a short corner here. And the header is cleared away. Oh, he was offsides. That shot back into the box was by Zach Vero. Just one of those situations where um, I don't think the team was ready for the ball to be distributed short by their goalkeeper. And, you know, if you give up important possessions during a game you might find yourself defending more than you want to. That was almost very costly. Looking to find Nathan Satir as be the playmaker there. Got a little got a little wound up on himself. It's Ricardo. Full train back on the ball, looking to play ball into Zach Vera on the other side. You'll notice that Zach and, um, and Vitor don't really hold to a left and right position. As, as good strikers do, they try to confuse the defenders with their movement across the field, create mismatches, um, force them to turn their heads. They did a really nice job of switching roles there momentarily. Yeah, we see Vero here on, on the near side of the field. He spent a lot of the first half on the far side of the field. Now they'll call that handling the ball. I suppose his arm was maybe in an unnatural position and referee stopped the play as the ball struck the player's arm. It's one of the most um, probably misunderstood, uh, along with offsides, rules in soccer, is what is a handball and what isn't a handball. And uh, as a general rule of thumb, um, having a refereed as well uh, many years, if the ball strikes the arm or the arm strikes the ball. So the rule 
more simply put, is just they're trying to understand is there sort of an intent or an unnatural position of the arm when the ball strikes the arm? And if so, they'll whistle it as a handling the ball. Right, so if the arm is not moving, the ball hits it with no intent, yep. no handball. Well, arm's got to hang somewhere, and so it's hard to penalize a player <laughs> yes, it does. when the ball strikes, just strikes the arm. for gaining possession. There was another example of the ball striking the arm. But no intent, so we play on. Just under 20 minutes to go here. Still scoreless. Yeah, give the give the referees credit for not um, you know disrupting the rhythm that is that has been found in the game. Oftentimes referees will micromanage a game in situations and That one punched away by Wishard. Now Vero starts the attack. It's good space, good build up. This is how Bedford wants to play. They want to break down the opponents, get them back, moving back in space, running in and behind. And there's a shot on goal just wide. That was Stateris probably. asking for a call that it was deflected, but looks like he's not going to get it. That was probably Bedford's best, best build up and rush of the game so far. It was thoughtful. Some good player support and movement off the ball. You could see um, you could see Nathan running behind the defender and then coming back to try to you know create some confusion there. That play certainly linked up nicely. Nathan Satiris, by the way, um, you know outside of soccer, um, is a world class ballroom dancer specializing in tap. No kidding. Well, that really helps on the soccer field. Yes, it does. It reminds me of one of the running backs for the Baltimore Ravens last year, Collins, who apparently did a lot of ballroom dancing and really helped him with his footwork. For a big, strong guy, it gave him that extra quickness and agility. Well, there's a young man from Wyndham, actually, that I coached many years ago whose parents um, own a, um, a dancing center down in Salem. His name is Devin Ulbrich, Ulrich, excuse me. And uh, he was a, just a terrific soccer player. And my understanding now is he's, he's still dancing and, uh, and really into golf. Uh, no longer a soccer player, unfortunately. Devin, if you're watching, we miss you on the soccer field. <laughs> Wyndham and Bedford scoreless here. If you're just joining us, Bedford is 5-0 and on the season. Wyndham 4-0-1. So a great early season test for both squads here this evening. Yeah, Wyndham's wins came against BG, Merrimack, um, <clears throat> Salem, and Dover. They drew to Exeter um, in a 1-1 game. Exeter um, often benefits from uh, you know, lots of talent in the Seacoast United soccer club. Bedford, conversely, benefits much from the GPS program here, located out of Bedford. So as I said, I think Wyndham is still trying to find out who they are as a team. And I would say that uh, not a bad start for them tonight against, a, again, what we know to be a very talented Bedford team. That one deflects off of Landon Neal in the far corner. But Bedford will have the throw in. Sixteen and a half to play here on a beautiful night in September. This is, it's still summer. This is about it, right? This is about it. This is as good as it gets. I mean, there's nothing like a, a cool Friday night when you're playing soccer in the fall. But, you know, we'll take this 70s and, and sunny. This is pretty ideal playing weather, honestly. It's... um. You know, it's comfortable. I don't think you really feel like you get overheated at this time of night. And yet you still got, um, you know, you don't have to layer on with the Under Armour and the, you know, and the caps and such, which can really be a drag when it gets cold. Middleton clears it away for Bedford. So 
So, you know, our coaches here tonight, um, Stu Pepper, Mike Heishi, are both uh, original coaches to their school openings. Pepper has been here for all 13 years. The program's been in existence. It's won two state championships. Mike Heishi, on the other hand, uh, over at Wyndham, he's been there now in his 11th year. Interestingly, Wyndham, when it first opened, was only a freshman and sophomore school and did not have a varsity program. So while he was the original coach in the program, could have been a penalty there. Charlie, Speaking of Charlie Breen, the Jaguar that got upended. Bedford looking to take advantage. Vitor. Oh, and they're going to call the foul And he gets the call. There. Speaking of Mike Heishi. Here's a chance for Bedford. Nice save by Preston Neal for the Jaguars. Yeah. He got low, got his foot out wide, made the right play. That was Poshman with that shot. Real reaction. See how the game can turn in a, in a moment's notice. He had arguably a um, strong case for a foul at the top of the penalty or right inside the penalty area for the for the Wyndham Jaguars. The no call, the quick transition, and a foul and a chance on the other end in moments, in just moments. There's Breen in the quarter for Wyndham. He runs out of room, so another goal kick for the Bulldogs. Yeah, speaking of Coach, ha uh, Coach Heishi, he certainly felt a, a foul was warranted in the box on the play down at our end, and pile onto that, the, the foul similarly at the other end and that was called and you can understand the frustration. You know, speaking a bit about the refereeing and the system that they, that they work in, it's, it's a, I would call it a challenging system. Uh, most of us are accustomed to seeing a, a three referee system. Absolutely. Where you have a single referee in charge in the center who's assisted by two on the outsides. And if done properly, the coverage in the field is tremendous. But here with a two-man system, you end up with a situation where they're compromising position for um, proximity. And so you have to give up a little something to get something else, whether it be the offsides position or be the out-of-bounds call or foul or infraction recognition. Right, so th their primary focus has to be to be about equal with the defenders to be able to call the offsides. Yeah, and, and if they want to get closer to the to the play for foul recognition, then they're going to give up on the on the offsides positioning. So it's a it's a continued situation of compromise. You don't get that with a three with a three ref system. If if everybody's in their right position. The center referee will hustle, box in the play and be within ten yards of the of the play with the assistant closest. And so you end up with um Two sets of eyes, really within 10 to 20 yards of almost every play. It, now, has this has this been the the referee arrangement for? I, is that the arrangement for all games? Interesting, you bring that up. Um, all regular season games, yes. I'm not 100 percent sure about the initial playoff matches, but I'll tell you that they run three in the finals. And that's obviously with the intent of um, providing the best product that they can, right? And this, by the way, is, is in no way, um, you know, a knock on, on the, the two gentlemen that are out here tonight. It's just a, a function of the system. In most cases, if you leave a game um, and you don't remember anything about the referees, then they've probably done a pretty good job. Exactly. And that's probably true for any sport. Play is going to come through Aiden. It's going to come through Aiden Parrots again. He's their playmaker up top. That's number ten for Wyndham. Vitor sends it over to Poshman. Now he gets it back in the corner. Yeah, he'll finish that run and look to try to get something on the end line. Nice takeaway from Colvin there. Touch was a bit too big by Aiden Parrots. And that one was too. Yeah. That was Nathan Viro. Nathan is Zach's younger brother. I coached uh, Nathan for a couple of years, and I've uh, seen him grow as a young man and soccer player and to a really good talent. 
I might have been the first coach to uh, put him in a defensive role, actually. Oh, how about that? Ball taken out of the air there by Wishard. Just over 10 minutes to play in the first half. We are still scoreless. You feel like something's going to break through here soon. That's the old submarine call. You had Vitor ducked underneath the jumping player and the referee's opinion that's that's an infraction. See Nathan, whose work rate is just off the charts, wins that ball from, from 13. Now we're going to have a free kick right in the middle of the field. It's a good example of the referee waiting to see if, if the advantage will develop. Um, when it didn't, he took away the play on and, and brought the foul back to the spot. Now from about 30 yards out here, what do you like? Do you like a, sh a shot directly on goal? I like a ball that's bent near the top of the box that the goalkeeper hesitates on. That's what you want, is you want him to hesitate. And if, you, uh, if you're too direct into the area and he can get to it first, then then it becomes too easy of a play. Oh, Vitor got that to land in that in-between area, but... Yeah, there was nobody there to really flick it on or, or disrupt the play just a bit. Quick counterattack here by Wyndham. And the battle in the corner goes to Bedford. Oh, no, it doesn't. Check that. Wyndham has the throw in. Which they take quickly. That was Max. That was Max Husson, by the way. Uh, a really, um, it's first year. He's a freshman. Uh, real tremendous talent. He's a triplet, by the way. He's got uh, two brothers that are on the sub varsity team, that um, are also talented young players. He'll be a name to watch in the coming years with Wyndham for sure in, in Division One soccer. Takeaway there by Wyndham. Back to Aiden Peretz. And that goes off, off of Bedford. So we have a couple substitutions coming in. I see one of them is Connor Lord. Connor Lord is a senior midfielder. It's number six. And the other uh, being uh, Mason Pfeiffer, a sophomore forward. Ball into the box. That's trouble. It could be. And Connor Lord with his first chance. Bit of a pinball situation here. Luckily for Bedford, ball now out on the far wing. They're going to call that a corner or a goal kick? They're going to call that a corner. Hard to see exactly who that ball would have touched last, but Bedford will defend another corner. Aiden Peretz, one of the players subbing out for Wyndham on that last throw in. Getting a bit of a breather before the half. That was Nathan Soteris who cleared that one out. And Poshman pumps it ahead with the left and Vitor using his speed. Couldn't quite get there in time, but Bedford will get a throw in. And here it comes from Fultran. Oh, they're going to say that ball fully crossed the line. Off of White. Illegal throw. Ball's got to be over the head. Oh, we are going to have a stoppage, and there will be a caution issued. That's Fultran with the yellow card. In uh, high school soccer here in New Hampshire, a player has to be substituted. He has to leave the field when cautioned. And I would expect a conversation in Bedford with the athletic director when cautions are issued. Just High standards in the school. Just a bit of a delayed toss there from Fultran. So now with 
Just about, just over five and a half to play. Wyndham with possession. Both teams trying to get one in the net before the half. We're still scoreless. That's Nick Colvin on the ball. First time I've mentioned his name tonight. 14 for Wyndham. Another talented player with club experience on the, on the Wyndham team. Attempted cross there from Vero gets deflected out, so Bedford will have another corner kick. So the last time Bedford played a corner, they drove one about waist high about to the penalty spot, uh, which I, I think is a, a brilliant way to play a corner kick. It's, it's an extremely difficult ball to handle. We'll see how they take this one. It'll be Zach serving it in from the far corner. Another low driven ball. Easily cleared though. Well played by the defender. Bureau gets it back and serves it again. That could be trouble. Oh, oh how about that? Great attempt there from Vitor. Yep. It's a good service. Def the goalkeeper was frozen on the spot and the Bedford attacker Vitor got to the spot. Just, uh, just missed on the execution. So in New Hampshire soccer now, under five minutes in the halves, they freeze the clock on the field, um, on the display, and the, and the referees keep the official time uh, in their pockets. Uh, this allows for uh, the opportunity to add necessary time for stoppages. We had the injury on the goalkeeper briefly that stopped play. There's the caution a moment ago. And if there were goals scored as well, those would, those would uh, contribute to the added time or time wasting by by teams. Well, Vitor in with another chance. He plays it back. Will anyone be there? Oh, Poshman shoots it wide. Yeah, so that's a great, <clears throat> great example of Vitor's speed and anticipation in the area. And what I especially liked about that was when he got down to that end line, he didn't, um, didn't look directly at the goal. He looked back at his trailing players and created a new opportunity with the decision. That comes with experience and confidence to not get frazzled there and yeah. blindly kick it towards the goal, to have the, the wherewithal to see the whole field. As a coach, I call those the head exploding moments where your brain just freezes and cramps up and you just, you, you don't make a rational decision. And when you can allow yourself to be composed in those big moments and, and make the rational, thoughtful decision, this young man is, oh, it's a foul, right? I was gonna say, that's not the place to take a throw in. <laughs> um, you make those rational decisions in those big moments and there's something to be said for the composure and the understanding of the game in those moments. Another free kick for Wyndham, headed away by Bedford. And Vitor has the control now. Taken right back by Wyndham. Yeah, Connor, Connor Lord won that one, coming from behind. Looked to play it forward pretty quickly to teammate Charlie Breen, but they weren't able to connect. Bedford controls now. Middleton plays it up ahead. Nice touch there from Vero over to Vitor. Looking for those diagonal runs, just not connecting. But look how many players back behind the ball Wyndham has defensively. Credit uh, you know, to midfield players like Connor Lord who are just on the attack up high here getting back behind the ball into a defensive position to ensure that there just weren't any open spaces. That's Jake Bowden with the throw in for Bedford. Now Zach Vero gets it to Vitor. Poshman takes it away. They're gonna try to change the point of the attack. Notice the team shifting. But here, you know, maybe maybe there's a fitness uh, concern, you know, right now with, with Zach Vero and Vitor, but as the play shifted sides, the strikers held on the opposite side and didn't rejoin. So maybe the, uh, the pace of the half here is starting to catch up with those boys. If you're just joining us, we're under five minutes, heading towards stoppage time. Still scoreless. This is a chance. Up. Couldn't get the ball through the gap. That was Cam Atkinson, number five for Wyndham, taking that one away. Oh. 
Drew played a safe one there with the outside of the foot. Now we have a counter attack. Zach's gonna get in. That's Alex Kim, we haven't called his name yet. Number six for Bedford in the midfield. Vitor and Vero seem to be picking up the intensity a little bit on these runs here in these last couple minutes. I think maybe they're starting to sense a bit of frustration. Uh, Wyndham defenders have, uh, have played them well, have limited their, their quality chances. And that's the half. So still scoreless here after the first half of play between the undefeated Bulldogs and the 4-0-1 visiting Wyndham Jaguars. So we've got a 10-minute halftime period here. Stick with us, and we'll be back in a few minutes for second half action on BCTV 23. Welcome back to Bedford High School for second half action here. The Bulldogs are hosting the Wyndham Jaguars. If you're just joining us, it's scoreless after the first half. I'm Andrew Hansen along with Matt Dion. George Cox is on the camera tonight handling all of the technological aspects of the broadcast. And Matt, uh, frustrating for Bedford. Uh, several nice chances there for those, those, the trio up front, Vitor, Vero, and Statires, but unable to put it one in the net so far. Yeah, rem reminiscent maybe of last year's match between these two teams where Bedford was rolling through the classification and um, Wyndham had dropped their first eight matches of the season. And, you know, Wyndham uh, lost a hard-fought 0-1 uh, game in overtime to Bedford. And perhaps that was an eye-opening moment for Bedford last year, um, crystallizing their focus to a championship drive. And it perhaps was a confidence builder for Wyndham, proving that they were, uh, you know, in the mix with some of the better teams in the state and it catapulted a positive second half season for that team. Well, now they meet earlier in the season this year, uh, both undefeated, but coming at it differently. And without question, I think, you know, Wyndham is trying to find out who they are as a team. Um, if I'm coach Heishi in the first half, I'm, I think I'm pretty pleased with, with the focus, the execution, um, fairly even play. Uh, Certainly there were opportunities had on both sides. And um, Wyndham defended them well. Quality scoring chances. Boy, the header that just you know, missed the post uh, from our angle looked like it was going in. And certainly uh, he's got something to build here now. Is it going to be a situation where they play to their opponent's level? Or you know, that can be good and bad, right? Obviously, if you're, if you're uh, playing against opponents that are maybe in the rebuilding phase of their soccer programs and only winning narrow matches, you're not really optimizing what your potential is as a team and dictating the play yourselves. That's right. We mentioned at the outset of the broadcast that Bedford has outscored its opponents this season 21-1. to So Coach Heishi of the Jaguars has to be happy with zeros on the scoreboard up to this point. Yeah, and conversely, you know, what would Coach Pepper be talking about with his boys, right? So here's a situation where the referee calls the offsides. He's about five yards behind the play, but he takes his best guess at it because of his positioning. We were talking about that earlier. But if I'm Pepper, you know, I might be just saying it'll come, boys, you know. Give it a bit of time. Um, you know, we're doing some creative things. I thought that their second half of the first half uh, was more creative, more dynamic. Uh, but as we said earlier, it, it, it all goes with those three boys up top. This will be Nathan trying to find some seam. Staturis throws it in to Hudson. And we'll do it again. So we're calling Graham Hudson's name for the first time really tonight. Uh, Graham Hudson is a uh, experienced club player here in the Bedford GPS program. Nice young man. Claims to be a good fisherman. I have yet to see a picture of a fish though. He's wearing number 13. He just fished that one away. 
<laughs> Over to Poshman, but now here come the Jaguars. He claims to have caught a really big fish and he was reaching for his phone and guess what? The phone wasn't there. <laughs> He'd forgotten it. And so goes those fish stories. A little casual there, I think, by Nathan Vero. Maybe he wants to take that one back to the ground and take it wide in a safer, safer clear next time. Well, that was Drew Middleton cleaning it up, thankfully. Anchoring the defense, number 22. Bedford without one of their top defenders today, Matthew Flanagan, number seven. Yeah, a real class individual, Matty Flanagan, experienced player, incredible, incredible work rate, emotional leader on the team. And by the way, a Beatles fan. I will, I will mention that. <laughs> Some spirited discussions about the band with him in the past. Getting dark now here with 35 minutes to go in the second half. Great night for soccer, though. Glad you could join us. Jaguars slowing the tempo here, switching sides. That was Kim Atkinson, number five. He's another one of their captains. He's a senior. This is a real promising chance. Quick there deflection, and there's a goal. Nice one-timer in the box from about 10 yards out. And who is that? That's Owen LaRocco. Now, we didn't get to call his name much in the first half. You mentioned earlier that he is their leading scorer. Yep, that's his fifth goal in the season, Andrew. All of a sudden, he <clears throat> comes up huge, and Wyndham is on the scoreboard first. Yeah, that's, that's just such a classic play in soccer where the attacker gets the end line, drives to the near post, forces everybody, including the goalkeeper, to turn their heads and look at him at the end line and plays a quick ball back through a seam to an oncoming striker who just buries it with a one-timer. <laughs> Textbook, by the way. Well executed by Wyndham. Clearly uh, the right decisions in that situation where they were in the field. We'll see how Bedford responds. I would expect a greater sense of urgency. Wait Preston him. Neal collects that ball and brings it back into the box so he can pick it up. was not really a, um, call it a traditional pass back to the keeper. It's just sort of cleaned up that ball that was coming from Avery Hudson on the outside. Landon Neal shoots one wide for the Jaguars, showing off some legitimate speed there. Yeah, so you can sense that Wyndham is feeling confident. They're running with a bit of Gas now, I think, uh, having scored the first goal of the match. Only the second goal this season that Bedford has given up, as we mentioned in the start of the game, and the first one being a PK, so really their first, first goal in dynamic play. A good one, though, a really good one by Wyndham. Wisher didn't really have much of a chance on that. No, it's... He's, he's got to hold the post in case the player keeps driving to the near post. And he's got to hope that his defenders are in position behind the ball to make the play and, and, and disrupt the ball. I say behind the ball, but in that case, the set pass to the oncoming striker. You just have to be in good position. Throw in from Nathan Vero. And we've got a free kick coming for Bedford. We have a stoppage here. I wonder if this is uh, to check on an injury or to caution the Wyndham player, or maybe just to have a word. Just a discussion on that one, Matt. Yeah, that was Jackson Mahoney. Interesting choice. 
Oh, the little half volley from Poshman goes just over the net. Yeah, just an observation about some of the choices that the Wyndham goalkeeper Preston Neal makes. I, I think that uh, in situations like that, if he can get both hands on a ball to punch it out waist high, he should just catch it as a goalkeeper. I always have that thought watching the World Cup. Yeah. Earlier in the game when he took that ball off the top of the penalty area and he was like right on the border, he doesn't want to have his momentum carry him out of the box and then you know risk of handling the ball. But he probably had a, an easier chance to just collect that ball and secure it in that moment. Zachary Vero is number 10. Gets the throw into Poshman. Bedford settling down here with possession. They probably haven't had the type of sustained possession that Coach Pepper wants. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, Andrew. You know, they they see they have moments where they string together four or five passes, but they're really not um, completely, you know, with a purpose yet. They're, and maybe they need to start that way just to, there's, there's the through ball. Yeah, he didn't time it well enough. He had the right idea, so... Zach Vero, you know, coming from the opposite side of the ball, tried to create a lateral run right across the midfield and time the, the peel off in behind the defenders, but just it was a bit early, according to the referee. You mentioned Zach, Zach Vero picking his spots and using his speed and changing speeds. It looked like he was shot out of a cannon yeah. as he went after that ball. Yes, absolutely. He has that potential. But here he is trying to encourage the build-up. Just not executed well by Nathan there in that moment. But see the hustle getting back behind the ball to help help the defensive shape. That's a classy play right there by Vitor. Gets it right back. Now facing a double team, but this he's got be, an opening. This will be a goal. Oh, Just wide past the far post. Yeah, you know, just didn't quite have... I think that was James Poshman on the second post in early enough. Geez, if he sells out there and just, you know, slides into that second post, that ball might just deflect off of him and it in the net. Doesn't have to be pretty, you know. They don't um they don't give you extra points if it's a pretty goal. See again, he's just punching that ball. He could catch that. Gives Bedford another shot here at the cross. And this one he does save. He being Preston Neal, the goalkeeper for the Jaguars. One nothing lead for the Jaguars here. 30 minutes of play remaining in the second half. Bedford picking up the intensity here, try and even the score and keep their undefeated record alive. Bedford's getting a bit more confident on the ball. Look, they're spinning it around, trying to find the little openings. That's a great entry pass there. But again, they're going to exhibit some patience. This could be an easy giveaway, though. It's unfortunate. That's Peretz playing the ball out wide. It's LaRocco again on the ball, looking to create something in the corner. Middleton punches it away. Ball played into the box, shot blocked, and Peters will try to control it. Yeah, it back to the net, bit off balance. He was clearly onside that one. This could be a goal. Oh, if he just, this is that moment we talk about sometimes where, you know, how do you attack the defender in that, in that situation? And maybe it's just, just keep the ball to your outside foot and get a bit tighter and then look to finish one off. That touch from Vero just played away by Jackson Mahoney. Consolation prize is a corner kick. Vero will serve it in. A curious choice to have Zach take that corner kick. You know, when you're a talented goal scorer, um, I tend as a coach to put the goal scorers in front of the net and have the players uh, serve the ball in and put those talented positions, players in those positions. So maybe they were just looking for a bit of a, a quick restart in that moment. Instead, it'll be a goal kick for the Jaguars. Preston Neal sends it to midfield. 
Nice touch from Stagiris. And now Poshman has it. Yeah, so this is when uh, teams get a little bit impatient. They start to play the ball too direct upfield. Again, we talked about the speed of the surface here at Bedford's Bulldog Stadium. And uh, in that particular instance, uh, the defense was in tight and compressed. And the direct ball just went easily to the goalkeeper. Ball taken away there by Stachires. And we've got a foul called. Wyndham will have the free kick. John Kane will do the honors. He almost scored on a header in the first half. Off of a corner kick. And, uh, just uh, not quite connecting on the timing. <clears throat> Ball settled down by Middleton. Vero plays it to the outside. See how far apart the two strikers are for Bedford up top between Vitor and Zach. Um, Wonder if they're going to try to to link in a bit more. Now here you see Vitor coming in, and it's always better to attack in pairs when you can. Otherwise, you find yourself in these one-on-two, one-on-three situations, and they lead to nothing in most cases unless a ball is misplayed or an exceptional talent comes in. And Parrots has it now. Oh, clean win, very clean win by Nathan Vero. Good patience on the footwork. Found the opportunity. The ball attacker for uh, Wyndham exposed the ball, and he just picked his pocket. Idea was there on Zach's part, but not so much on Vitor's. <laughs> Good drop shoulder fake. Ball into the area. Easy clear from Wyndham on that one. Just over 25 minutes to play here. Bedford trailing the Jaguars, one to nil. Ouch. And the Wyndham player takes a shot. I think that's, uh, is that Colvin? That yeah. is Nick Colvin, the senior captain. Smashed off the back there. Vitor settling it. You're going to see Wyndham try to find opportunities to clock manage here, and this is one of them. Pushing the defenders out. Sometimes every second can count. Peters gains possession, plays it back to Hudson. Now Stateras starts the run. It's Vitor. Wyndham not afraid to create a little physical contact. Seeing what the referees will allow, and clearly they allow that one. Virel throws it in to Bowden. This time he gets it to Vitor. James Poshman at the top of the box. Trying to create an opening, is it? Waiting for the signal. Uh, I think they've signaled a corner on this one. That was a strange play. It's almost like Wyndham never really had possession in that quick trip down the field. 
but they earn the corner kick. Another test for the Bulldogs defense here with 23 minutes to go, down 1-0. One of those uh, mystery um, contact fouls in the box that you see in soccer in high school all the time, but can never remember or see who it was doing what. Uh, Wyndham takes this 50-50 ball. And now they'll throw it in. Cam Atkinson. Peters plays it into Poshman. He plays a long ball. Yeah, if the defender misplays that, uh, attacker should be, should be ready to run right through that ball and make the play. Often coach kids to play the mistrap in that situation. The risk and reward is disproportionate. Vitor working it towards the middle. Gets it to Stateres. And Bedford will have a free kick here. Right on the edge of the box. Nathan Stateras drew that foul. Bedford looking for the equalizer here. Just 21 minutes to play in the second half. You know, it's kind of one of those unnecessary fouls. You know, the attacker's back is to the net. His momentum's taking him further from the goal. Uh, as a defender, I'm just going just gonna to lean in and, and let him keep going backwards away and further away. Really no need to create any contact. The wall is set. Oh, terrific ball. Two shots on goal, both unsuccessful. Great opportunity there for Bedford. Yeah, arguably their best chance of the night, I think. Satira is looking to create another one. Stout defending there. Just held his ground. Bedford will have yeah. the throw in. That's the right call. Again, Vitor not, not playing off of Zach in that moment. Bowden forcing the action there. And he'll make the throw in. Right to Vitor's foot. That's where he's at his best. He wants to face up the defender and try to create that ball still in. Oh, there it goes. He's had a lot of his touches tonight with his back to the defenders. Oftentimes well, two of them. Yeah, a lot of times a striker will, that'll be the most common position to find themselves in and, and they become playmakers in that moment because they're setting, receiving, or receiving and setting players into different, different spaces behind and around them. Wyndham slowing the pace here a bit. Catching their breath. Landon Neal with the throw in for the Jaguars. Now the big cross. Ooh. If that one got caught in the lights, but Ricardo just seemed to be a little bit um, frozen by, by that ball in that moment, it just as it reached him. Looked to me like that might have been deflected, but we will have a goal kick. Just over 19 minutes to play now. Bedford needs to get on the board. They just gave up the first goal of the game. At the 35 minute mark here of the second half. Yeah, we're seeing a lot more fouls called here in the second half of this game as the teams get a bit more um, you know, emotional and stakes get a bit higher, especially with a 0-1 game, Bedford trailing. Oh, that ball is free. And it's a goal. And now it's in the back of the net. Yeah, slight misplay in the back. Just a bad bounce. And then Zach Vero literally, the ball surprised him where he was. And like any talented ball finisher that he is, he found the outside of his right foot and just placed a technical ball into the back of the net, low into the corner. Vero really didn't waste any time on that play. 
The goal's a goal. I wouldn't say that it's the, the prettiest goal that um, a team will score, but certainly the execution was there in the moment that was needed. Has to be the biggest mistake that Wyndham's defenders have made tonight. And Zach Vero was ready to pounce on it there. Yeah, it might even be the only mistake they've made. And uh, as I think back in the game, they've been pretty tight. So we'll see how Wyndham responds. What will be their approach? Will they continue to play direct? Obviously the time wasting comes off the table now. Landon Neal plays it to the corner. Yeah, just a bit heavy on that ball. And again, with a fast surface here in Bedford, there's no chance for the Wyndham striker to catch it. That's just a, a signal of the closeness in which they're calling this game right now. That'll be another corner kick for Bedford. Yep, looks like it crossed the end line. <clears throat> So clearly, Zach Vera will take the corner kick again, meaning that uh, this may be by design. Here it comes off of his right foot. Yeah, he's playing a bit longer that time. And Preston Neal controls it now. Long throw over midfield. It's a good 50-50 tackle win. Oh, it's going to be a foul there. Yep. That's Jake Bowden who got possession and then yep. drew that foul. So 10's going to step in front of the ball, right? And um, high school soccer has been a bit strict on this uh, encroachment to the point where you don't necessarily have to ask for the 10 yards to get the 10 yards. I mean, this is clearly five yards in a football field. You can measure it precisely. It's quite easy. Yeah, it's not 10. <laughs> See, again, there's another, another punch. Interesting, uh, the closeness in which this game is being called now. Just over 16 minutes to play here in the second half. We are knotted at one. Bedford with the momentum. Zach Vero getting them on the board two minutes ago. I'm surprised they didn't call that one. That was actually, a, I would call a legitimate foul. Boy jumping into the other one. Goalkeeper can pick the ball up with his hands when it's headed directly to him from a teammate, but not when it's passed directly from his feet. Here comes another opportunity for Wyndham. Headed away by Avery Hudson. There's a counterattack being started by Nathan Stateris. Some build up and the speed in. Oh, just misconnected. We have a substitution coming in. Looks like it's Connor Lord for Wyndham. I thought he really sparked their team in the first half. Um, he played strong on both sides of the ball, very present. You know, you want to uh, see young players uh, have impacts, and, and this time he seems to be um, a target player up top, where last half he was more of a midfield workhorse. Speaks to his versatility as a player. Had the opportunity to be around um, Connor Lord at uh, GPS soccer camps, and is Coach his little brother for a bit, Braden. Top notch family. There he is with the header. That's anticipated nicely by Nathan Vero. We just saw saw the lane. Went and won it. Bowden plays it to Kim. And Bedford will get the throw in. You know, one of the other challenges on a surface like this, not only is the speed of the ball, but also 
just how hard the surface becomes and how much the ball bounces more. When you play on uh, newer turf surfaces, uh, that ball will, will die quicker on the, on the surface and play more like a grass surface. Ooh. Ball in by Vitor is off the crossbar. Play continues in the Wyndham box. Very clear, cleared away by Breen there. Very technical play by Vitor on the end line, you know, turning his hips to, to keep that ball in play and, and actually gave it a chance to, you know, to uh, be, be a goal-scoring opportunity on the second post. Middleton clears it away for Bedford. Yeah, they'll call that one. Up and over the top, that was Nathan Vero following Connor Lord. So another restart. See how Wyndham plays this one. Bedford's going to hold around the top of the penalty area as we saw in the first half. 13 minutes to play here in the second half. We're tied at one. It's an easy clear by Drew Middleton. The ball took a funny bounce. Must have had some spin on it. Charlie Breen now working in the corner for Wyndham. Good clear by Avery Hudson. Stepped in with a left foot, played it safely, away from danger. Hudson, a junior defender. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Bedford graduated 11 seniors off of its state championship team last year. So a lot of new faces getting big playing time here for Coach Pepper. Yeah, Avery's one of them. Uh, Avery is a, is a young man that uh, has actually assisted me coaching some soccer teams, has a passion for coaching and an interest, and uh, he handles a group of young kids very, very well on the field. I see a future for him in the coaching space. Middleton clears again for Bedford. He's had a strong game back there defensively tonight. He's probably got more work than I think Bedford thought he would, to be fair. I think this Wyndham team, though, is uh, making a statement that they should not be um, underestimated at all in Division I soccer. This is only their second year in Division I after having achieved uh, a lot of success in Division II soccer. Five consecutive Final Four appearances. Um, you know, Coach Heishi has built a, a program there that is, is continually improving. And while last year, with just the, the four wins, three ties, or five wins, excuse me, five wins and three ties, four wins. <laughs> um, you know, they uh, really had some optimism, reason for optimism coming into this season. And this is one of those games where they can point to and, and build upon even further. That might be a corner kick. Nope, the ball did cross the line before he touched it. You know, I think you could say that you know one of Wyndham's challenges this season has just been able to maintain consistency. Uh, you know, watching this game here today, I would say that they've really played a well up to this point, a pretty consistent 70 minutes of soccer. And that does bring us to the 10 minute mark here, tied at one. Wyndham scored first in the second half here. Bedford got the equalizer from Zach Vero. And now looking for one more. Some good footwork, footwork there by James Poshman. Here comes a three on two opportunity. Ball deflected twice there so by Nathan be, Biro. Could be one of those situations where uh, Wyndham felt like, yeah, so here we have a caution. 19 must have uh, said a bit too much to the referee. He was uh, 
clearly looking for a handball in that moment. Uh, maybe in the referee's opinion that, like we talked about earlier, the ball played the hand in that case and not the other way around. That's what it looked like from my vantage point. Did you say anything different? No, especially the, the, the pace of the ball to me is another piece of it. When a ball is smashed at such a close close distance and it, and it hits the arm, unless, that, unless you really think that player had time to move that arm into a position deliberately, you just have to let it go. And that's the truth of it. Um, it's not like what most folks think it is, just a clean, quick and easy hand call every time. Ball headed out of the box. This could be a shot opportunity. Yep, they'll get a corner if that ball goes out of play. Oh, and so Ruko nice. wreaking havoc again there for the Jaguars. Yeah, quick technical turn at the top of the box. He got the ball on his left foot. I don't know if he's left footed, but when you're in a striker position, you just have to take what's available to you. And in that moment, the momentum took him to his left. You've got to feel confident to play that ball with, with the foot, whether it's your strong foot or your opposite foot. Charlie Breen, one of the leading goal scorers for Wyndham this season, set to take the corner. Playing a deep ball. Looks like that's Connor Lord on the second post. Another shot blocked by Vero. Keeper wants this one, yep. We heard that one all the way up here, didn't we? Yeah, we did, and uh, that's, that's what you want from your keeper. Keeper is in charge. My son plays keeper. Both my boys play keeper, in fact. And, but my son uh, here on the bench is a junior uh, varsity player. Goalkeeper by trade, waiting for his chance in the program. Bedford looking for another offensive chance there. Just headed away by Wyndham. And Poshman there to throw it in for the Bulldogs. And my other son is a um, one of the goalkeepers on the Lurgio Middle School team here in Bedford. So two goalkeepers in the family. I don't know where they get it from because I would have been a dreadful goalkeeper. <laughs> what was your primary position? I usually played uh, left, left out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in seriousness, uh, I, I always preferred to be either uh, to face the field, either completely in the back or completely up top. Um, and uh, I was not the, the player who would have the stamina to contribute to the midfield. Uh, but I love to play a center back position or a striker position. Oh, there's Vitor this creating an opportunity for Vero. Oh. And he can't connect with Statiras. Yeah, I think if Zach uh, Vero picked his head up there just a moment and, and had a better view of what was ahead of him, he would have driven right into the near post and, and then either tried to finish second post or, or laid one across. Keep that goalkeeper on the post and like the Wyndham boys did earlier in this half. Just under six minutes to go now in the second half. Tied at one. Two undefeated teams, Bedford 5-0, and oh, Wyndham 4-0-1. Oh, In about 30 seconds, the official time will be kept on the field again, and we'll be at the mercy of the referees to give us our final whistle. In this instance, New Hampshire does play overtime soccer in the regular season. When the time is right, we'll review what those overtime rules are. Pitford looking to get one more in the back of the net here so we don't have to Go to the extra period. Tries to do a little Maradona move there. Spin around the defender. He's played well. Again, very direct by Wyndham. They're going for the grand slam. I wonder if this is how Coach Heishi would be asking them to, to play the situation or if he'd want more of that buildup that we saw them doing so successfully earlier in this game. Now under five minutes to go here in the second half. And every free kick now is a, a major opportunity to score the game winner. Yeah, 
Ball into the box. Cleared away by Kim. And another one that Wishard would be able to handle on one bounce. Looking for a quick restart low, but he's not seeing what he wants, so he's going to send it upfield. Vieira heads it over to Stutires, who deal, has to deal with three Jaguar yeah. defenders, and now he turns it over. That's Neil in the midfield. They're going to call that handball that time. Arm was up a bit, you know. I suppose the referee's opinion, his arm was in an unnatural position. Vitor tries to flick it up, and now he flicks it to himself. Got a bit cute there with the ball, and had the ball taken right from him, a three-on-three -three developing. It's going to give up a corner. We are late here in the second half, under five minutes to go. And it's going to be Luruko, number 11, taking the corner for Wyndham. He scored Wyndham's only goal. Opting for another low corner. You see the effectiveness of it getting through. Two on two with the speed, world-class speed by Vero. Here he is, in alone. Yeah. Difficult play, very difficult play, going at that speed, you know. I'm sure he wants to chip the goalkeeper there, but it's such a hard play to make when you're, when you're going at that speed and you're a bit off balance. Preston Neal really cut down that angle. Perfect example, though, of how Bedford you know, can capitalize with their speed on a fast surface. That play certainly developed quickly. We have a player down at midfield. That's Landon Neal who got tripped up. Just a collision or a tactical foul there. Could be either. Jackson Mahoney sets the ball for the Jaguars. It's a dangerous ball. Clean, cleanly played, though, by the Bedford defenders. Poshman finally able to clear it. Heavy touch there. He's going to set up a goal kick. Yeah, I think the player in that situation knew that he was he would have been whistled off sides if he'd, if he'd become involved in that play. Um, he decided to let it go, and the ball goes for the goal kick. He was coming from an offsides position when the ball was played to him and let it slide. Sutirez so plays it up to Kim. The Jaguars take over now. You know, Wyndham is really heavy on talent in the midfield, especially the center midfield. You know, we've called Landon Neal's name quite a bit tonight. S certainly that's uh, an important player for this team. But Charlie Breen, you know, is another one of those high-class players that makes a lot happen. This could be, could be something here. We've got a whistle here. Up oh, and we have the end of regulation. So first there was a foul called in the box on Bedford Vitor Rodriguez, but the end of regulation superseded anything that would happen after that. That was really quite an opportunity there for Statiras. Ball was loose in a dangerous way from Wyndham's perspective right before the end of regulation there. So to recap the scoring here in the second half, it was Owen LaRucco getting the first one of the night for the Jaguars with 34.58 to play. Scored from 
about nine or 10 yards out. Really no chance for Wishard to make a save. And then Bedford got the equalizer with 18.38 to play. It was Zach Vero taking advantage of one of the few mistakes by the Jaguars defenders. Scoring with the outside of his right foot. Yeah, and I would definitely say that, uh, you know, this, this game sort of has a feel for, you know, a confidence builder for Wyndham, but still struggling to put the ball in the net prolifically, albeit against a, you know, talented Bedford team uh, on the defense. And Bedford finding themselves in a strange situation where they're not scoring a lot of goals in a game. And game developed. I would say really found its personality in the second half, especially after that first goal was scored. And you get to see how Bedford responds and you get to see now how Wyndham responds giving up that equalizer late. Both teams seem to be composed. Should be an interesting overtime. If you're just joining us, Wyndham has outscored their opponents nine to four this season coming into tonight. Bedford had outscored its opponents 21 to one, so a much stronger offense. And Wyndham doing a great job tonight, holding them in check. I thought that there really were two areas, two periods of the game when Bedford's offense started to get clicking a little bit. It was at end of the first half, those last six or seven minutes when Vitor and Vero and, and Statires started to make some good connections. And then after Vero scored for Bedford, those last 20 minutes, I thought Bedford really outplayed Wyndham, but they just couldn't get that second one before the end of regulation. Yeah, Andrew, you're right. And you know, if, if, if I'm Pepper, um, you know, and we're doing a post-mortem on this game, I'm gonna be reminding the boys that, you know, we shouldn't need to wait for a goal to be scored against us to, to find our, our tempo and to, and to elevate our work rate and, um, you know, be the team that we wanna be. Uh, felt a little bit like that, I think, in the second half. Um, you know, maybe Bedford felt like they were, it was just going to come like I thought that, you know, Pepper might say at halftime, you know, it'll come, boys. But I think in this instance, um, Wyndham executed a, a terrific goal and it uh, got Bedford's attention and they responded. They responded in kind with, with, with work rate, execution, and, uh, and a good bit of teamwork in there. And a bounce that went their way. That was a very fortunate bounce. We've got about two minutes here until... We start overtime. Teams nodded at one at the end of regulation. You know, it could be in an instance like this where, where Wyndham's missing, you know, player, uh, uh, excuse me, Jake Rust, who uh, has lost this season to an injury, lacrosse player, high work rate, super energy kind of kid. Um, maybe in a moment like this, you know, he would have been able to be a difference maker. Well, we've got 10 minutes on the clock here, Matt, as we get set to start the overtime period. Bedford has the kickoff, and Statires plays it back. Very direct approach to start the second half by Bedford, getting it forward. Nathan showcasing his, uh, his high step dance skills <laughs> with a bit of juggling of the ball in there as well. And Bowden plays one that, that one past the goal line. So we'll have a goal kick here by Preston Neal of the Jaguars. Bedford in their home black uniforms. Looking to give this crowd an overtime winner. If I have the rules correct, I believe that uh, this is not a golden goal overtime format so we'll play two 10 minutes teams will switch ends after the 10 minutes and if the game is still tied after those 20 minutes then the game will go in as a draw beautiful night here for some bonus soccer and now we've got a nice rush from Vitor but that fizzles away Fultran will have the throw in now. Trying to carve out some space there at the top of the box, create a turning angle, but just not successful. Good defending by Wyndham. 
This is what Bedford wants to do. They want to knock the ball around. Windham successfully, though, getting numbers behind the ball again to defend it correctly. LaRocco up the left wing, but he runs into Middleton. Yeah, did he ever. Middleton knew what he wanted to do the moment that ball was hit big by LaRocco. That last big touch did him in. Play getting a little bit more physical here. Looked like Satira's got nicked up a little bit. He's limping near midfield. Now Bowden plays it back. Hudson gets it over to Middleton. So good target play by Peters. I'm sorry, that's Alex Kim. Now Poshman in the middle. Vero settles it up to Bowden. Every possession in the attacking third becomes important in these games. We've seen how quickly things can develop. And here's one of them. Satiras plays it to the middle, but cleared away. Ball bounces all the way into the stands. Very exciting moment for the spectators. Get to touch the game ball. Connor Lord taking it from Zach Vero there. Middleton reversing the action now. And they find Vitor, but he touches it out. Just lost the handle on that. We're four minutes into overtime. Knotted at one. Another big touch there this time by Nick Colvin. Taken away by the Bedford defender. Vero. Now you have Vitor connecting very tightly with Zach Vero. Trying to create a two-man game up top. Only problem there is there were five Jaguar defenders right there. And that is the key to defending. Numbers behind the ball. So we have Alex Kim down, pretty much asking the referees to stop the play. And, and we get that whistle. He'll come off. It looks like it's uh, Brian Peters coming back on in this place. Clock stops here with 5.27 to play in the first overtime period. <clears throat> what you'll see here sometimes is with the drop ball, they'll clear the ball to the team, opposite team from the injury. It's a sportsmanship play. We're fans of sportsmanship up in this booth. Absolutely. Great, great early season battle here for these two teams. Yeah, it's a real, uh, it's a real measuring stick. I think when you find yourself in a difficult game, what you learn about your team. Foltran has it. To Stutiras, gets it back. Almost didn't look like he expected to get it back. He was making the run, but. Just didn't look completely connected. Bit of a miscue here. Leads to a shot on goal. Wishard's able to save that one easily. It's Connor Lord, you know, taking a chance at the net, turning a ball. Hit it well, just right at the goalkeeper. Long ball. Here comes Vero, plays it into the middle. 
Head deflection off the defender, goes to the keeper. He can pick that up. No concerns there. That's Preston Neal, the keeper for the Jaguars. Another instance, I think, where I think Zach Vero might, given a second chance, just take that ball and drive to that near post. Vitor has some space, plays it to Vero. They called him off sides, I think. That looked close from this angle. Yeah, I don't think he was off sides, but. We are not wearing the green shirts tonight. Oh, we have a cramp. That's Fultran. Yep. Just after gaining possession. You could tell that either muscle strain or just a massive cramp just hit him right on the spot. He came up lame. Hopefully that's all it is, is a cramp. Clock stopped here with 3.16 to play in the first overtime period. I don't expect we'll see that clock move for the final 316. I think the referee just asked the booth to hold the clock in the final five minutes, so they'll keep the official time on the field. Yeah, that looked like a classic uh, cramp right on the spot. You know, if that's a calf muscle, I can tell you that uh, when that thing starts to explode in your in your calf, that cramp. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I get it even when I'm sleeping. <laughs> you just stretch and the calf tightens up. It feels like it can be hard to work that out. And uh, you know, as a soccer player, you know, you're really relying so much on the on the condition of your of your muscles to, to do what you want you to to do what you want them to do. Again, Bedford's gonna play the ball back. Preston Neal. If you're just joining us, we are in overtime. Tied at one. Wyndham scoring first in the second half. And then Bedford tying it up off the foot of Zach Vero. And he heads it ahead to Vitor Rodriguez. Nice takeaway, though, by the Jaguars. I think Coach Heishi here is uh, sensing that this one is for the taking. You know, he's a lifelong New Hampshire resident, played at Pinkerton Academy under uh, Kerry Bowles, obviously a very well-known coach here in New Hampshire soccer. And um, teaches first grade, and Coach Heishi just recently had a newborn uh, little girl, just a few months old. Sure, he'd like to celebrate tonight with a with a win. Peters plays it up to Vitor. Now Satira is looking for some room. Plays it to the corner. Good run by Zach Vero. Taking himself away from the goal though. Looking to combine on the outside. That's why they have Extra balls on the sidelines. This one was smashed probably a good 70 yards <laughs> over the, the parking bleachers. lot. <laughs> See how much more time Bedford has here before the clock switches again and we change ends. Probably just a minute or two left here. Feels less like it. In the first overtime period. Referee on the coach's sideline keeps the official time. Vitor unable to settle it. Hmm. Sometimes there's contact and there just shouldn't be a foul. I think that was one of those cases. Players just running through the ball, players off balance, his leg is up in the air, he's on one leg, you know. Not Vitor's fault. Yeah, I think that uh, he was making a fair play on that ball. Folks might disagree with that point of view, but we've seen a very tightly called game, especially after halftime. 
And there's another whistle there. Yeah, legit foul. Wyndham player though is down on the ground. He's stretching out something I think himself. That's Landon Neal. Games like this can be a real test for fitness so early in the season. Interesting. Yeah, so here the referee stopped the time at time even with a restart. You know, a lot of folks would find that controversial. Like somehow uh, players and teams are entitled to more time than the referee, you know, has. Uh, oftentimes we do see referees allow the play to continue through restarts or corners, you know, et cetera. Um, the only time that they're not allowed to do that is during a penalty shot. So on a, a shot from the mark, um, even in expired time, the outcome of that play has to be, has to be determined. But corners, goal kicks, kickoffs from the center after goals, free kicks, indirect or direct, are all, are all part of the uh, dynamic play of the game, and it's the referee's discretion when to end that time. That was strange to hear that whistle right as that free kick was being made. Yep. Well, in fact, I just heard um, a fan from the, from, the, from the benches ask the question, well, if it was a penalty kick, would they be allowed to take it? And the answer is yes. It's, it's treated differently. Penalty kicks happen um, at a stoppage in play. Getting set here for the second overtime period. Teams are going to change ends. Yeah, it used to be that teams they would just just change ends immediately upon the the full time of the first over first half of the overtime, but now they seem to uh, give them a break. Well, we'll have 10 minutes left here for one of these teams to earn the victory. Wyndham will have the kickoff to start this second overtime period. And we're off. Almost an identical play to start the second overtime as Bedford started with the first overtime, but from opposite teams. Poshman plays it ahead. Yeah, if Kane doesn't play that cleanly, you know, a kid like Zach Vero or Vitor, they'll they'll pick that up and they'll they'll be in alone. So it might look easy, but hand was down in a natural position. It's good no call. We've heard that theme tonight. Hanging down by his side. Of course, of course, the fans all want something different on this side of the stadium. Ball finally going off of Perrette's there. So Bedford will have the goal kick. Wishard sets it and quickly plays it to the far side. Hudson, lots of space. Gets it back. Plays it just wide. It looked like that ball must have crossed over the end line uh, as opposed to an offsides, right? You have to throw in. It's Nathan trying to be creative in this moment. Again, everyone wants the handball, but you see that arm was just in a perfectly natural position. Ball played ahead to Vitor. Can't quite connect, but Bedford will have a throw in here. Graham Hudson. Back to Nathan Vero. Yeah, they're pinned in. Look at how well defending. Oh, that's a, they missed that one. That was a forearm play right there in front of us. Referee was already looking upfield and
Uh, I'm Bedford. I'm not really uh, comfortable with this type of play right here with the ball bouncing around the area. Looking for a clear and try to gain some possession and time on the ball. A little impatient by Zach Vero. Peters now finds Tatiras. Yeah, just three Bedford attackers, though, trying to r make a run against five defenders. Credit Wyndham for being in disciplined in their shape. And they take it away from Vitor. Connor Lord now playing it ahead to Breen. That's Peretz in the middle. It's a good clean slide tackle there. Momentum, momentum of the player from Wyndham just carried over. Clock now at 6.20 to play here in the second overtime period. Still tied at one. And that throw in from Wyndham will go across the goal line. Wishard setting up the goal kick for the Bulldogs. Bedford will look to possess it instead of giving up the 50-50 ball and then be direct again. Just over five and a half now to play in the second overtime period. Big header from Poshman. Brian Peters checking in. Nathan opts to go long to James Poshman. James is oh, one of those players, they're gonna call the foul. James is one of those players that on a moment's notice could, could do something spectacular. Another Wyndham player, Matt Kearney. Must be a cramp. You just get a sense that this is one of those nights where their players just aren't uh, really uh, quite set for this 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 competitive level um, and this this degree of intensity so early in the season. Just game number six for both teams. Bedford five and zero. Wyndham four zero and one. Jackson Mahoney ready to take the free kick for the Jaguars. With them not giving up on that play at all, they were did not want to lose their opportunity in that space of the field. I think, uh, you know, I'm looking at Bedford right now and I'm seeing such a big gap between their attackers and, you know, the rest of their team. And, you know, to be successful in these moments, you really have to find a way to maintain your shape and keep those gaps a bit tighter so you have the right players in support. Those, those top strikers otherwise are always facing a two on five like we've seen. Preston Neal. Decides to give up the corner kick in that instance. I think where he probably could have picked that ball up again with his hands. Big opportunity for the Bulldogs here late in the second overtime. Oh, yeah. He picked that one out cleanly, though, with his hands. No punching that one. Preston Neal must have heard your commentary. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs>
Yeah, you know, you get the sense the team, these teams here are uh, just resorting to more direct play because maybe they, they lack the real, I guess maybe fitness and patience in these moments to, to keep the build up going. It takes a lot of discipline to go sideways and backwards sometimes when you want to head forwards. Yes, it certainly does. Wyndham looking to create an opportunity here. Late in second overtime. The officials on the field have the clock. Bedford finally earning a throw in. Now they're going to make him back up. Took far too many liberties with his positioning on that field with a throw in. Vitor tried to sneak a throw in there, but. Well, if Bedford wants to create something, they're going to have to get to the other half of the field. Giving up a valuable corner kick here. Here comes an opportunity for the Jaguars, potential game winner. And the header there from Charlie Breen goes just wide. Yeah, Nate Vieira was on the post. Aiden Wishard was there. I think they were pretty confident they had it all the way. Wishard picking up the pace here. And Vitor has a free kick. Too direct again, right? You know, we talked about this earlier. They need to put it in a spot where the goalkeeper isn't going to be able to make a, a clean play on it. Force him to make a difficult decision. Preston Hill is taking his time. Finally picks it up. <clears throat> One misplay here and Bedford with the throw in now at midfield. Time running low here, late in the second overtime. We're tied at one. Have to imagine time is going to be called full here. And there it is. So that ends the second overtime period. This game is going to end in a 1-1 draw. And Matt, we had a scoreless first half. We had Wyndham striking first with LaRocco. And then we had the equalizer from Zach Vero with 18 minutes left in regulation. But neither team able to score after that. Yeah, I mean, I, if I'm Wyndham, I'm coming in here. And, you know, this is a stepping stone, right? They want to be among the top teams in the state. I think their goal is to... Uh, is to be a legit top four team and, you know, coming in here tonight and earning a draw against, you know, is what we've called a very talented Bedford team. Well, we should be seeing a very talented Wyndham team as well. Uh, they stuck to their game plan, held their discipline in, in team shape, struck first, defended, and made plays in big moments of the game. Bedford did much the same, uh, but, you know, I'm sure it's going to feel a little bit different in their on their side of the field after the after a game like this. Questioning now what they'll have to do to um, separate themselves from the rest of the pack in Division One soccer here in New Hampshire. And Coach Pepper will have a chance to chat those things over with the Bulldogs, try and improve for the next time out, which will be at Londonderry on Tuesday. We want to thank you for joining us on the broadcast tonight. Check the town website for future broadcasts this season. 
And on behalf of Matt Dion and George Cox, this is Andrew Hansen saying so long from Bedford High School. You've been watching the Bedford Boys soccer team on BCTV 23.